Hey guys, Bobbery 18 here, and welcome back to some more Super Mario Bros. 3. I know it's been a while since my last part, but that's only because I've had a lot of computer problems, and also I was, I'm not able to record a lot, so I don't have a lot of opportunities to, unless, like, my whole family is gone, or they're asleep or something. So, yeah, that's sort of the reason why. And I also s switched over to the Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario Bros. 3, the Super Mario Advance 4 version, um, mostly because it has more saving options and you can do more with it. Although I'm not going to be showing the e-reader card thing because I don't have that and it would be kind of complicated to hook up even if I did have it. So yeah, and the levels and stuff aren't really different than the original or the SNES version. Um, but Mario and Luigi, if you had Luigi with you, but I don't, have actually have voices. Well, like little voices when they get a power up or, or, uh, or get a life or something like that. Um, but that's really, or, and it has like Game Boy Advance graphics, but that shouldn't really be a difference. It might be a little more stretched out, but I don't think that would make that much of a difference. So anyway, let's get on with, with level 5 of World 1. Okay guys, from here on out, it's going to actually be post-commentary. Because I was stupid enough to have my volume all the way up and forgot to turn it down. So on my live commentary, you could actually hear me, or you could actually hear the, the game volume in the background. So I'm redoing it with post-commentary. So yeah, here we are in the cotton candy cloud area again. And... It, just like the other one, if you go up to the sky, you can get another one up. Um, this is level 5, by the way, if you can tell that from the beginning part. And you could go through the level the other way, but I like to do it that way because it takes you sort of towards the end. And that green piranha plant right there, um, that was actually a fire piranha plant in the SNES and original versions. Original, I mean by the NES version. And here we are, we finished World... Yeah, world... Ugh, get your words straight. Level 5 of World 1. Okay. And this is a hammer, bro. Um, there's different variations later on, but if you t scroll over him, he'll pull you into a level. Like, um, like this. He'll, like, pull you right into a level. And you just have to fight him like a regular hammer, bro. Just knock under him. And right there, that block that I just broke, there's sometimes a power-up in that. Sometimes they're in the other ones, too. But they seem to never appear for me. I don't know why. Anyway, we get a star from that battle, which is added to your menu item thing. Yeah. And let's move on with level 6, which is sort of nerve-wracking also, like level 4, kind of, I guess. And there's actually just a leaf in- yeah, like there, there's a leaf in that. But I already have one, so I don't think it's really worth it to, to go get it. And in those blocks down there, there's a life in one of those blocks, but it's kind of risky. And these two blocks right there, like what I just fell onto, there was only one in the original and the SNES version, so they sort of made it easier in this version. And I don't know why I went under that Koopa, I usually go over it. And I think there was only three blocks there too in the original and SNES versions. And oh, oh no, 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 no. Well, at least the Koopa came with me, I guess. If I have to die, the Koopa's coming with me. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, well, I'm not really gonna cut that out because, well, I was thinking about using an item there, and I guess I did, because I used a mushroom. But I'm not gonna cut that out just because, well, it's not that long of a level to get back to where I was. If I die in the later levels, I probably will cut out my failing, because I'm probably gonna fail a lot. So, because the l later levels are usually longer. But for right now, since this level isn't long at all, I'm just gonna show you going, show you me going through it again. And that time I hopped on the Koopa, which isn't actually really hard to do, I guess. I usually do it when I go through this level normally. And I actually made that jump last time without falling off of it. And here we are, we're at the end of the level again. And that Koopa is there sort of to trap you, I guess, because you'll want to run, but sometimes you'll actually run into him. I'm just kind of mean. How dare they put that, put him there. Put that there. No, never mind. Um, and this is another toad house. So I got another, m well, I got a mushroom. And, well, I guess that makes up for the one that I 
that I used on level 6. And this is a castle. Oh, it's terrible! The king has been transformed! Please find the magic wand so we can change him back! And the, and the king actually transformed into a snake from Super Mario Bros. 2. Which is kind of weird. Although I guess this game came out after it. So it does make sense. And right here, when Mario's climbing up the chain, it I think I always thought his back looked really shiny for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just the sprite looking shiny or something. But this is an airship, an owl that got hit right there. And there's one of these at and the end of each world. And they're usually they're usually a lot harder than this one. This one just has a lot of cannons and bullet bills and stuff like that. Um, there's a fire flower in here because I kind of needed it because I got hit earlier. Because I suck. <laughs> and now we're just moving on. Not much really to say, it's just a bunch of bullets on a ship. Oh, uh, they must really not want you to get into here. And here we are at the boss. At the boss of each world is a Koopa. This one is Larry Koopa, I believe. They change it in, like, almost every game. So it's kind of hard to tell. Just jump on him three times and dodge his magic on blasts. And then you're good to go. Some of them will have gimmicks later in the game, but this one doesn't. All there is is that raised platform there. In the... off to the side there. And for somehow the, the ship just disappears out of thin air. And then the sky turns all bright again. And then Mario falls down to the castle. He falls down to the castle, drops the wand, unharmed. Oh, splendid. I am back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here's a letter from the princess. I don't know why, but that king always reminded me of Luigi, kind of. Don't you think, kind of? And then Toad's all happy. Greetings, if you see any ghosts, be careful. They will give chase if you turn away. I've enclosed a jewel that helps protect you. Princess Toadstool. And now that jewel, it's called a P-Wing. And, well, actually, I should explain this first. If you clear world perfectly it'll say the screen and say perfect clear and yeah i will save my game like that and that p-wing it'll turn you into raccoon mario but you'll you'll um have unlimited you'll p your p gauge will be unlimitedly fl filled up it'll never run out so you'll be able to hover over the whole level and now we're in world two the desert level their world, I guess. Some people call it levels, I don't know why. And these are like those mini Goombas that those para Paragooms were throwing down. You can tell which ones are the fake ones by which one they're not shiny. And the real ones are shiny. And they'll start to hop at you when you get towards them, but I guess you can kind of tell that. And here's a star in here. I'm gonna try to get it. But, wow, there's a lot to go through just to get a star. At least, <laughs> at least I... Like, oh, and those are fire snake things. I don't think they can be killed unless you have a star. Which makes them really annoying, and I think they're homing, too. Which is really, really annoying. And down there, there's another leaf in one of those uh, wooden blocks, but I don't really care about that. And if you go in one of those pipes, there's a secret bonus area, but I didn't really feel like going in there because I just didn't. <laughs> and end card. Um, yeah. Another end card. I actually... Did I show this off in the last part? I'm not sure if I did or not, but... If I didn't, you just flip over cards, try to get a match. I'm usually not good at memorizing things, so I usually suck really bad. Except there, I got ten coins, but coins don't really matter at all in this game. And I didn't even... If you match a pair for, like, you get the pair that you get. Like, if you get a... If you get a match with a mushroom, you get a you get the mushroom in your inventory. Or if you get a star or a flower, same thing happens. And oh oh, can I get it? Oh. Okay, I can't go any higher. No. Well, I got the ones on the side correct. Doesn't that count for something? Doesn't it? Huh? Huh? Oh well. Oh well. Wow, those are really high voice that I got up to. <laughs> And there's a leaf in there, but I didn't really need it since I already had my leaf. And that water is really sparkly. I never really noticed that before. And that was not what I was trying to do. Like, I just automatically kicked that shell. And I think in one of those boxes back there, there was a P-switch. But I think it's easier just to go over it. Like that. And then can we beat the platform there? Yeah. I don't know why. I 
just trying to have like a race with the platform, even though I'm obviously faster than him. Because Mario's so fast, he can jump on bullets. Can Sonic do that? No, I didn't think so. Or maybe he can, I'm not really familiar with Sonic that well. But anyway, here we go onto the fortress, and doesn't this sort of look like a jail or like a dungeon? Well, I guess it is kind of. No, it's it's like a castle or a fortress. Fortresses, unless it's like the dungeon part of the fortress. But I don't know. What don't only like big castles have like dungeons? Like they throw prisoners in or something? I don't know. But that's the green pipe there. That's like the only colored thing in this whole fortress. And the thwomp, it, it always annoys me so much because I usually overshoot that jump so much that I knock into it. And then he comes down right as I'm jumping. And then this part is fun here. Watch. You just run, 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 and then the the thwomps won't hit you at all. And this this part is kind of annoying too because you can't go up or you can't... Well, you, you have to run under them. Or I guess you might be able to float over them. And for this part, you're supposed to go on top of it, but I usually just run underneath because I find it easier. I do it for both parts here because I think I find it easier. But then I usually can't get to the door in time before it goes under, so I have to wait. And here we are. We have another boss battle. Well, I won't even call it a boss battle. A, a boss battle. Yeah. A boss battle with, with a boom boom. Just ambush him like we did before. And he'll be gone in an instant. Not hard at all. And I still don't know what that question mark ball thing is. I'm guessing it's like a bomb or something because it destroys the castle. I don't know. Well, as you saw, that, that lock cleared up and it opened a pipe. But I'll explain that in a minute after I go into this toad house. And which one am I going to make? The left one? Oh, I got another mushroom. Well, at least it's better than nothing, I guess. Well, this is a pipe and it just, it's just like a mini level. There's no time or anything. It just takes you to a different part on the map. Usually parts that you haven't, or that you've already unlocked because they don't want to give away other areas in that level, or world. And here's another hammer, well actually it's a boomerang bro. Just wait for him to throw one, then hop on him, then use your momentum you got from hopping on him to go behind the this brick, or this giant brick right there. And... Yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. So in the next part, we will finish up World 2 and probably do some of World 3. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.